In this video, we're going to go over some additional things that we can do with struts. So to start off, um, we have the same file that we were working with in the last video. So we have a struct planet T that we've defined that has um, information about a planet. So the name, the diameter, the moons, the orbit time, and the rotation time. And we already have functions to print our planet and uh, to compare two planets and tell us if they're equal. But the first thing we're going to do in this video is define, write this function here, that will fill a planet to struct uh, with input data from the user. And so first off, I'll note that structs can be returned by functions. So I could implement this um, in a different way. I couldn't get my success failure thing, but I could alternate implementation of scan for a planet. Um, I could actually return a planet T, planet T, and then I really wouldn't take in anything. Um, but the reason, so unlike a, um, if I needed multiple variables or something to return, um, I can actually return a planet T here. But we might want to do it this way because we get this information about whether or not we were successful. And so here, here we would just return it back. Um, and in the implementation that we're going to work on, we're going to pass in a pointer so that, and we're so we're passing by reference so that um, we can both assign that planet and also return uh, this uh, success failure int. So let's copy this function prototype down here so that we can start implementing this. Um, So, oh, do I not have my key casting on? I do not. Okay. So, all right. So, we want to use, use scanf to get planet info from the user. So, and we also want to uh, remember or sort of record whether scanf was successful. So if you remember from before, we can return, scanf returns to us the number of elements that it successfully assigned, right? So if I want to save that, I need to define a variable for it. So we'll just call that result. And so now I'm just going to say result is going to be equal to whatever scanf returns from to me when I do something like, um, I guess I'll just, so I need to read a name. So that can be a string. Maybe I'll have the user separate by white space. Or maybe I'll say print, enter a planet like so. And I'll say name, what do we need? What's our order here? Oh, it's actually name, diameter, um, moons, orbit, time, and rotation time. I think I can, I assume I can actually put white space in here. Maybe not. How about I do this? And now I can do, no, that's a little nicer. Okay, I just haven't finished this yet. So I'm wanting them to, oh, I forgot my, I deleted my name. So name, so my name is going to be a string. My diameter is a double, which I need LF. My 
moons is an int, my orbit time is a double, and my rotation time is double as well. And then where do I want to store these? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky. So I want to store um, in the components, I guess, as the components of my struct, right? So, but I have a pointer. So uh, PLNP, so like planet pointer, is a pointer to my struct. So if I want to get to that, I'm going to need to use the indirection operator. So this is going to say go to whatever PLNP points to. And then I want to use my dot operator to get to those actual components. Now, the thing that we need to realize here is that the precedence of the dot Maybe we should even, oh, I don't think I have it linked, but we can Google C precedence, uh, C operator precedence. So I want to point out that our dot has very high precedence. And in fact, it's before the indirection. So what's going to happen here is if I don't put these parentheses around my dereferencing here, then I would actually dereference first and then try to use the dot, or excuse me, I'd, I would use the dot before I tried to dereference. So without these, it would be equivalent to doing this. So I guess I want to say, but I don't want that to happen. I want to dereference first and then access the name. And then Let's see, so again, we got some trickiness. So name is a pointer, right? Because it's a string, which is a array of characters. So don't need ampersand. But then when we go down to diameter, diameter, this one is just a double. And so I do, need my ampersand. So this can be tricky. Just be careful here. Um, and I'll show you a trick to, I wouldn't know, well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's conceptually easier, but at least it's shorter. Um, and now we need our planet pointer. So we follow, follow our planet pointer to the planet, and then we get dot moons, and then we need to pass in an address of that. And here we need orbit time, and here we need rotation time, and then we finally have it. Okay. So How many things do we expect to get back here? It looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five. So above up here, we said, maybe I'll just copy this. This is from the book, so I guess we'll just do it what how they wanted it to be. So, so my result now holds how many things I successfully assigned. So and I hope that five things were successfully assigned. So if result is exactly equal to five, then, and I'm just going to use, use result variable to hold what I will return. So here I'll set results to zero because this is success. Oh, oops. So result is one is success. Else, let's see. Um, okay, so we can, as we're doing scanf, we can get um, this end of file. Oh, hmm. 
let's see. Okay, I guess we're, we're being a little clever here. So if result is not equal to end of file, then, okay, not, we're unsuccessful. So, let's actually, actually this would be, I think we should just return result. That's what we're gonna do, is we're not gonna worry about this fancy Let's just return result. And so then I could process that if I needed back in my function. And I guess we could change. Returns the number of um, inputs correctly assigned by scanf. Okay, so now we, if it's successful, we should get five because uh, we should assign five things. So let's actually test this out in our main. Okay, so um, test out scan function. So we're going to need a new planet for ourselves. So that would be a planet T. And maybe we call this one made up planet. And we're going to fill it. So I'm going to say results. Oh, I'm going to make a int results. And then I'm going to say result is, um, what did I call my planet scan? Is it just planet scan? Planet. Scan planet. So now scan planet. And what do I need to pass in? I need to pass in a pointer to my made up planet. And so you might be tempted to think, well, okay, a planet, our structures are like kind of complicated, like arrays, so maybe they're already pointers. They're not. They're not already pointers. So I'm going to need to pass in the address of operator to made up planet and we will see if this works hmm. there maybe well, let's just print out result anyway um so we're gonna say uh Items were read by scan planet. And then I need to pass in result. So now I'm actually using this and I should not have a warning. And apparently, so enter planet like so. Okay, so my name's gonna be test, diameter is gonna be 100.1, moons is gonna be four. Orbit time is going to be 90. Rotation time is going to be 89.1. And it looks like, so first off, we see that five items were read, so that's good. And now let's also print it because we have a print planet function all ready to go. So this is made up planet. I'll have to enter again. Diameter 65, 67. Moons also 67. Orbit time 80.1. Rotation time 4.1. And oh my, my uh, print function we only put in. We didn't put everything in. We just printed the names diameter and moon. So that's fine. So one thing I wanted to show. Um, down in my so 
you can kind of see we're doing a lot here with our, um, like we're following the pointer and then we're um, getting the address of, and you might say to yourself, well, it's kind of annoying that we have to do this whole dereference inside the parentheses and then the dot. And so it turns out we can replace this exact thing with a slightly shorter syntax. So this is saying, assume planet P, PLN P is a pointer, follow that reference and then do the dot. So let's see, we're not getting any compiler errors yet. So I can replace this. So just a reminder of how do I copy and paste in Vim, I can press V that puts me in visual mode and then I'm pressing L to highlight everything I want. So one thing you might notice is the last thing that you've highlighted is, at least for me, it's, it's that gray versus the white, which can be a little confusing. So I need to put my gray, like this thing, all the way, oh, I can't even highlight it, um, on top of the last thing that I want. So this is going to highlight all the way to that uh, greater than character. So I yanked it, and I can use it to replace this. Oops, I need to go all the way to the dot. Oh, so since I, I replaced what was in my clipboard, so I have to yank again, and now I can paste. And I think, so here, let's see, I think if I paste, yeah, it gets me what I just deleted, but instead, I could do, okay, I'm just doing undo, I can do, I think I can do dot to repeat an action. Oh, no, that doesn't work. No, trying to be sneaky here. Oh, no. Yank, paste. I'll try one more time. Okay, dot, no. I think the dot repeats an action sometimes, and there probably is a better way to do this, but I won't take time out of the video to look it up. So this should do the same thing again that we just did. Let's just check though. Name test, 45, 45 moons. We'll make all of them 45. Okay, so it still works. So the takeaway here is that if I need to dereference and then do the dot. I can replace that whole thing with this dash and then a greater than sign if I want. I can also just do this. In a way, I, it almost feels good to me. It's more explicit. So up to you. So next I want to show something that's going to be really important for our assignments, which is just the fact that we can um, make arrays of structs. So <clears throat> I guess my, honestly, my program is a little bit unorganized at this point, so maybe I'll just continue with that. Um, let's make an array of structs. So just like other times we've made arrays, the syntax would be the type, which is planet T. And then the name, and I'm going to say, how about planet array, and then the size. And let's just say I'm going to put in two, or I could do three. So I could initialize this um, with the curly braces like we see here. And so then I need to fill in, you know, I've got my... In fact, I think I might need double curly braces. Let's try just one, a size one, and we'll test it out. So we need, I think it's planet 
diameter moons orbit time rotation time maybe we can do two I'll just copy this and make it oh I don't know why I got put to the front there again and I'm going to tab over and paste. And then this is well, somewhat organized. And I'll just change these ever so slightly. But call it good. Um, and then I would need my, maybe I'll put this up here. So at this point, I would have two planets, planet T structs, stored in my array. And that would be just fine. And I could do something like, let's say I wanted to um, iterate over planet array and print each planet. Well, as you might guess, I can just use a for loop for an I. I less than two, and I'm going to increment I. So I'd like to print planet at um, index I, and so I already have my print planet function, and so I just need to pass in planet array at I. And that just gets me the planet that I need. Let's, I'm going to add a, oops. Let's take away first off our scan F because I'd say we don't need that. Maybe we just comment all this out. And I'm just going to put a blank line so that we can see easily where our results go. So now we run it and oh, this keeps confusing me, but our print planet function only is printing three. So we only expect to see three things, but we're successfully doing that. So. Now you can see that storing structs in arrays is very straightforward. Um, and so you're going to want to do that in some of the upcoming assignments. And so another thing I n I'll note, I won't demo because I think that you can imagine it, um, is just that we can also have structs inside structs. I can make one of my, my components of my struct another struct. That's totally fine. Um, and I don't think we need to do that for any assignments, but I can let you explore that on your own if you would like. And the last thing I'm going to show here is how we can move this out of our um, file here. So let's say that I wanted to just be more organized and also practice some sort of general C programming style, which is that I would like to put my um, actual declarations, so the sort of data structures that I define, um, and my function prototypes into what's called a header file. So as we've noticed, we even in here, we're including these header files. And the compiler is not going to do anything different with a header file versus a C file. Um, but it does behave a little differently um, when we include things. So we're going to include, or let's say I'm going to 
call this planet.h, the file that I'm going to put this into. So <clears throat> if I just want to include something that's in the directory that my file is located in, then I can use the quotes here. So this is what you're going to do in your assignments when it says put your struct declarations in a header file. This is what you should do. And so what it looks like, maybe, okay, I'm going to use, so I can make an, a tab in Vim. I'm going to say tab. I'm going to call this planet.h because that's what I said I was going to call it. And then I would just, I can press D to, uh, yank, to uh, delete there, but it's in my clipboard. So then I can press P and now it's here. And so this would be totally sufficient for my header file. I don't want to do any of my like include statements up here or anything like that because we'll get some kind of like circular includes. Um, so just don't put any for this is the class. Just don't put any includes in your header files. And now, so we're including this, so it's going to be available to our program. So we should be good. Ooh, the one thing is we're already getting a, we see that str size isn't in there. So I said no includes, but you're defining a constant is fine. Um, and then that's good. So let's just see if, oh, there are changes. So now let's run it and it still runs. So, and let's see, I now have a planet.h file and planet.c. So my .h file is holding that struct. And so this will be required for, um, some of our assignments. So there we go.